Okay, welcome back everybody. This is Bear vs. Wolf, and we're going to pick up where we left off yesterday. Uh, we did some drums, uh, and we're going to add some guitar to the track today. Um, and we'll go through the process of doing that, and hopefully you'll learn from that. Alright, so, uh, I'm going to show you real quickly how to... Uh, I added my voice to the session here instead of doing it like we did yesterday. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So, we go to mono aux track. We did not cover aux inputs at all yesterday. And so we're going to do that today. Uh, you click on new track as I did. Create one mono aux input. Create. And so what an aux input is, is you can just bring audio into the session um, as a, a voice is what I'm using now. So you can see over here, I'd have to set up the input through the interface. If you're using your mic input here, I'm using an ADAT, uh, which is an optical um, input on the, on the Apollo. So I'm not going to get too much into that, but that is how I'm doing this. So I'm just going to let this track get deleted. Bye-bye. Uh, so now you should be able to hear me a little bit clearer than yesterday, um, ideally. Uh, so let's pick up where we left off. We have the drums playing. They sound pretty good. They're a little loud. I'm going to bring them down. So nice tones. Um, that sounds great. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and use this as my drum loop. I'm going to mute the click track for a minute because yesterday, if you watched the video yesterday, we quantized these drums and everything is locked to a grid. So what I do is I go in here, I'm going to trim this up. And I'm, by the way, I'm in grid mode. There are four modes to Pro Tools. You can uh, find many videos on explaining those in depth, I'm sure. Um, but for our purposes, we want to be in grid mode because we're working with drums and we locked them to the grid. We explained that a little bit yesterday, the gridding uh, system behind. You can see where my cursor is. One, two, three, and beat four. So that correlates to two, three, four. All right, so we're locked to the grid, which is good. And I'm going to make sure the end of this loop is also little bit of a fill at the end. We don't need the excess, so I'm going to trim that back. You can see that goes away. So now we have a nice loop. That sounds great. Little fill in there. And there we go. So that obviously right now is not at the beginning of the session. You can see where I'm cursing over here and I'm going to drag that to the front and just push it up against the beginning of the song. I'm actually noticing the very first drum hit is not as loud as everything else. The first snare drum. There's a little bit of inconsistency there. So you can fix that since we did this as MIDI. So you double click on the um, uh, clip here with the hand tool. Boom, boom, double click and find the snare. Whoops, Apple, Apple Z to undo that. And I deleted it there. Um, so you see these little velocity sliders down here and that's the volume of each uh, individual event that happened. And if you click on that, you got snare and you can hear snare. And if you click on this, you get hi-hat and click on this, you get another hi-hat. So there's two samples there being created. So somewhere around here, there's another snare drum and that one's louder. And so I'm gonna actually, that actually may have triggered as a rim shot. And what I'm going to do is pick this one out, and you'll see the slider there light up. I'm going to bring that up. I click on this one. That one shows all the way at the top, so it's a much louder hit. And it's a little inconsistent, so I'm going to do the same thing, drag that one up. Now when I play it from the top, 
now they both sound the same. So that's all. You could, you know, you could edit this stuff for days, but. Sounds good, sounds better, sounds more like the drums that I want. So today we're gonna uh, throw some guitar on top of this. Uh, we did not do anything other than drums yesterday. So. How do we do that? We didn't do any audio yesterday, so I'm gonna double click on this and name it GTR for guitar, the way I like to do things. And I'm gonna bring it in the, uh, my client interface one. Uh, so the way I'm gonna do this track, just to show you this really easily, is to record this guitar um, direct. Which, you know, if you have a different interface, um, or any interface, basically, you plug your guitar straight into it. That's the way a lot of people are recording. And you can get some great sounds doing that, especially if you have Pro Tools first or something, you know. You don't have a lot of plugins you, you can use. So, plugging in the guitar. Plugging in the... Sorry for that. That was a little bit loud. Plugging in the guitar directly into my interface. That's it. No amp involved yet at all. So I'm just going to tune real quick, make sure I'm in tune, always good. To be in tune. But it's not coming into the session yet. The only thing here is my voice, you can see. Uh, so I set it up on my client input one. And in Pro Tools, you can do input mode, which if you just click, it will bring in the guitar when I click on it. So that's a little bit uh, too much preamp. So I'm gonna turn that down just a hair. to make that happen always almost always a gain now if you have a high Z input that's what you want to plug your guitar straight into uh, that is a guitar out so sounds fine nothing wrong with that I'm gonna add an insert on the top so inserts are basically all kinds of different things but you have EQs dynamics pitch shift reverb all these different types of things and somewhere here I have um, 11 Lite, which is a, I think it's a free plugin. Um, you could probably get with all kinds of different things. And so I'm gonna use that, uh, all kinds of different interfaces and such. So, and you may be able to just download it uh, from Avid. So 11 Lite, you can hear there is some fuzz because this is all, like defaulted to kind of a crunchy Thing. So this is more, you know, you can change the amp here. I'm just going to the presets and if I go to clean and bright, we get a setup. If I bypass it, it sounds like a guitar, but it's kind of flat. Nothing special about it. Right? So that's a little bit better of a sound for what we're going for. And just to quickly listen to what we have. So it sounds great for me. It's a little trebly, and I'm gonna pull the treble back just a hair, and the presence also back just a hair. It's kind of real bright. And actually, up here there's a bright normal mode. Click on that. And that, to me, that sounds much much better. So I'm gonna go with that for now. So we're in input mode. We can hear everything. If I take it out, we're not going to hear anything. 
right, but if I go ahead and hit record, it comes back. So input is great for just kind of like, you know, playing over the track if I play. Now, if I hit play, I don't hear my guitar anymore. That's gone. So if you're in input mode, you will hear it. So we're going to go with that. Real basic. I mean, you know, I'm not trying to get a Grammy here. Um, we're going to go back to the top. I want to see what happens when we talked about the click track yesterday. I'm gonna, I have it set up for two bars. So when I hit record and I hit play, we're going to hear two bars of click. And I'm going to record that passage. Except I have the click muted. So I'm going to unmute that. So record and play. And that's all we need for now. And you can see up here, and I'm going to make this a little bigger for you. Again, with the ruler sliders. Talked about that uh, yesterday. You can slide this back. Boom. And now, ah, we're not hearing it. And that is because we're in input mode. So uh, you can actually change a setting called. Da, 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 da. I'm forgetting where it is. You can see there's a lot to remember and work with in Pro Tools. Um, yeah, for now it's all right. We just turn it off. Looks like auto input monitoring. Let's see what that does. Auto. You can search quite a bit. Auto input. No, no big deal. We We don't need to worry about it right now. Um, but now I hear my guitar. So now you can hear the guitar with no when I'm input mode. So great. That all sounds good. Now, obviously, there's... Um, only 22 seconds of audio here, so we're gonna we can extend that, make it a little bit longer. So an easy way to do that is just click on the uh, clip here and go to edit and repeat, or you can just hit Option R uh, to do that. Um, hit repeat, and it's gonna ask you how many times you want it to repeat. I'm just gonna do one, and I can see in the edit window we have two. Sorry, you can hear my dog chewing on a bone. Um, so now the guitar continues, and there's a little bit of a funkiness there, so you can go in and put in a fade into that. You click on this uh, smart tool, and when you, you know, go across the two, you're going to see this little guy come up. That's called a, a cross fade. Up here, you only get one, you know, and you want to change modes now to slip, so now we're not being locked to the grid. So that would fade it out that would fade it in. But I'm going to do a crossfade and do a little bit of both. So what I like to do is zoom in really far until the waveforms are like that and just do a little crossfade like that and hit adjust bounds. And now it goes right through. Of course, you could play this twice. Um, you can do that. I'm just trying to show you all kinds of different options you can do. So over here, I'm going to hit that option R to bring up the repeat window. I clicked on the drums, and now the drums are also going to repeat. Sorry, the train is coming through again, and probably getting some low-end rumble in the sound. That's the way it's gonna be. So now we've got two passes. All right, sounds great. All right, so that is it for recording rhythm guitars. I'm gonna just throw a lead on here real fast. 
name this uh, lead guitar. Uh, I'm going to try to keep this video much shorter than yesterday. It kind of went a little long, so... Now we have a lead guitar track. We're going to do kind of the same thing. I'm still plugged into the preamp the same way, or the uh, interface. I'm going to go up here, interface, mic line, input. And you will hear my guitar. Okay, so I'm going to put the same plugin on there, 11 light. Again, you could do this without plugins. I just happen to have one that works really well. Sansamp is a decent one too. You can pull that up. I uh, believe this is also free with Pro Tools. Um, let's see what that does. So it definitely changes. It's more of a preamp thing, so you can get like, uh, let's see, Clean One. Sounds okay, no big deal. Mid clean, a little bit more mid. Okay, so you can mess with the, the presets, but I'm going to go back to 11 light and show you that. So, vintage crunch was kind of nice. It's a little bit loud, but since we're in input mode, I'm going to go back and let it play. I actually kind of like the idea of just doing some big strums. Over that. And this actually has a trim on here. So you can hear now the tremolo is kicking in a little bit there, which I kind of like too. A little slow. Nothing fast. Which is kind of cool. Just a hint of it, I think sounds nice. And I'm just gonna record that part, I actually kinda dig that. So we're gonna hit that, we're gonna go to record, play, we're gonna hear two bars of count off, and we're gonna track. And I'm just gonna ding there for my text messages coming through. All right. Um, grid. And that's that. I think we're going to go ahead and stop there. And next we'll maybe put a little lead on this or put some bass on it. So thanks for checking it out. If you have any questions or you want to see me explain other things, uh, happy to do that kind of stuff. So uh, comment, subscribe, like. Hope to see you back here. Bear vs. Wolf. Next time. Bye.